So I've been asked the question, how to create the connections between the vertical arrays, let's say for a storefront. Um, so we, I've done that in this exercise is create the connections and also started over with how to create the storefront from scratch and then later on the connection. So here we can move around the location of where we have the storefront opening. Then we get into creating the arrays, which are going to be our facade. And there are a few techniques here that I show where we can create the connection as a channel, and then we can subdivide it into the connection so it can actually be fabricated. So this is a little bit more detailed in terms of fabrication. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to answer them for you. Um, and thank you very much for being here. Let's get right into it. So to start, we need to create the base form and I'll be creating here first. We'll go to a X Z plane. Then we'll bring in a plane component so we can create our base surface. So we'll go here to plane surface and we'll be plugging in this plane into the plane input. Now we can change the size of the X and Y. So let's go here to 15. Now the units that I'm using here are going to be feet. So if I change the Y and I'll go here to 15 and then the X, I'll go here to 30. Next, I'll be creating the subtraction. So this is going to be the first region. And I'll be creating a point somewhere on here by using an evaluate surface. Now with this one, we can bring in an MD slider so we can pick a point within the surface. So we'll plug in the plane into the surface input. And then we do need to reparameterize this way it turns this surface into zero to one and zero to one, which is exactly what this empty slider does is it will create a number from zero to one and from zero to one here, which will put it right at the center. Now we can move this around. So I'll put it here around 0.5. And this is something that we could also construct a point to do. So if I go here to construct point, and then here I'll go 0.5. This is another way we can pick 0.5 and then here copy this. If I want to go up vertically, we can also do that. So two ways of doing it. One is more visual. The other one is more accurate. So we'll plug this in for now. Now let's create the other region. So I'll take this plane or hmm, let's see here. Yeah, I'll take this plane Take both of those, copy them here. So basically just copying that surface and I'll use the frame as the input to create the opening. Now what happens is when we create the surface, it's actually not going to do it down from the center. So we do need to take this and move this plane. In which direction? Well, we can use the same frame and we can deconstruct this plane into the X, Y, and Z. So we know that in the X and Y, we need to move it backwards halfway. So we do here, we'll go to amplitude. So we can move it in the same direction. So in the X, we'll use the amplitude vector or in the, we'll use the vector for the direction and the amplitude for the amount. So we know that it's going to be half of X. So we'll do divide by two. And we'll also need to go negative. So it goes back in the opposite direction. Now we can move it halfway. And we can also do that in the Y direction. But since we don't really care for it to be centered in the y direction, this is actually perfect for us. 
So we can now deconstruct or de disable preview. Now we can do what we can do is here we'll go to a 10 foot opening and the height is going to be 10. So now we can subtract one region from the other. We can go here to region difference. And we'll take this plane and subtract this plane. And now we can go here to boundary surfaces to just create that outer boundary surface. And we'll just dis disable the preview on all of this. Now we can move this around here and subtract a portion of the region. We can also do it with this one, of course. So now let's go back to here and let's create some subdivisions um, for this that then we will be turning into um, which is the subdivision is not going to be the important part of this tutorial is going to be how we connect those subdivisions to this original plane. So what we'll do is we'll take this, we'll go to extrude. And here we'll go to Z. Well, this is X, Y, and then Z is this way. So we can actually use Z amplitude. and extrude this surface using that amplitude. Now it's extruding it out, so I'll go here to a negative component, so it extrudes it back in the other direction. And the reason for that is our design's actually going to be extruded this way. So we'll disable preview on this for now. Actually, no, let's leave that. We'll be using this surface. We'll go here to contour. We'll be contouring this shape. The point is going to be in the middle, so we'll bring in an area component. We bring in the center point up this surface. The direction, well, it's going to be in the x direction, so we'll bring in a unit x. And the distance is going to be by how much? So we'll go here to 2.50. So what this does is create a set of arrayed lines through that surface. Now we can take that and extrude it in the opposite direction. So we can take this. copy it over and delete the negative because we want to go in the opposite direction this time. Now we'll be turning these, right, these solids or these surfaces into solids by extruding them from the center. Now, let me show you one way so we can kind of create this. Um, it's not that hard, but let me show you a resource. So if you go to my website, I have here some free resources. And under this tab, you will have to uh, become a member. It is free to become a member to get to the resources tab. But once you get here, there will be one called surface to solid. This one, if you click on the attachment, you'll be able to download it and bring it in to your script. So I'm going to drag and drop it into the script. It'll open it in a new page. But let me show you what that looks like. So I opened it up and it has this script that's already made for us. Um, down here we have copy this to your project to extrude a surface relative to the surface middle. So we'll take this, copy it, and I'll bring this back to my to our other script. And I'll actually paste this in here. This one will let us create, turn that into a solid. And this is already kind of done for us, so we don't have to, you know, recreate everything from the beginning, although it's not that difficult. And you can always double click in here and see how that happened. Um, so I've made sure to clean up and have those things available for you guys if you guys need it. Um, with that being said, 
I'll ungroup this. Let's do this. Now with this here, we can disable the preview on those, and now we have the array. So now we can focus on creating the connections between these and that wall. All right, so at this point that we got the segments here, and we have these contours that created those segments, what we need to do is take the endpoint here, or the start point, and then move it over to one side so we can have that start point be exactly at where the segment starts. So we'll go here to endpoints, the contours. Now I'll go to the start point, this one, and I'll go to move. This is going to be using the surface, so the original surface. We're going to deconstruct it. So we'll go here to deconstruct plane. This way we have the vectors that are relative to that surface. So we can now use X, Y, and Z to move those points. So we'll take that point, the start point, move it in. Using amplitude, we can move it in the Y direction. And now for the motion, I'll plug that into the motion here, and now we can plug in an amplitude. So we'll do 0 0.500 to get some decimal points. And now that you see that we can move it, well, we have our section depth. So it's going to be whatever the depth is divided by two because it's going from the middle. So we'll go to section depth divided by two, and that could be our vector to move our point. So now it's tied to the segment. And that's really the, the cool thing, the power of using parametric design is that we can have things tied together like this. Um, now we can take that point and move it both in the same direction again, but by a different amount. So we'll go to these two, copy them, plug this output into the input. Now the amplitude is going to be different. So we'll do 0.5. We're going to now go amplitude, but in a different direction. So we'll go take these, copy it again. But rather than the vector be y, we're going to go to z. Now we have three points starting from here. So we'll go to a line segment. And we'll plug in this point and then this point to create that line segment. And then we'll use this one as the endpoint for the next one. Now we can join those together to create that L shape. And it does that to all of them. Next, what we'll do is this extrusion here, we'll use as a mirror. Let's see if that lets us do it. We'll go to mirror. So it copies it to both sides. So that creates that bit of a bracket. But before we mirror it, let's actually finish the geometry. So we'll take this, go to offset curve. We're going to do 0 0.500, so like a small number, because this is going to be a smaller bracket. Now we'll go to a negative value because it's extruding in the opposite direction. So we want it to go in this direction. So with these two now being offset, well, we can create a line segment to join those two. So we'll go to endpoints for both of these and a line segment between start and start point and then end and end point. 
And since we're going to be mirroring this, well, this will make it a lot easier because we don't have to do all of these steps over and over again, although we could. We'll go to take these, these, So the idea is that this determines how big that bracket's going to be. Let's see the other parameters. This is going to be the length of it this way. This is the overall length of it in the other direction. It obviously updates with our when we move that slider. And let's go back to our offset to see here. Mm -hmm. this offset is going to determine the depth of it so if it's going to be 0.25 inches let's see if that works It's 0.25 inches and it's not doing it. I think it's still doing 0.25 feet. So this is where you could do, let's say, two inch or two inches divided by 12. So this is half inch. So by dividing it by 12, if this is in feet, then I can use this in inches to know the exact depth of it. Okay, so now with this, we're not done yet because we've only done one side. So we need to mirror it using this one. But we're not going to mirror it yet because there's still a few steps that we can do before we mirror it, which will save us time and also computing power. So by just doing one of these, let's go to extrude in the direction. Well, this time, since it's down, we can go to Z negative and plug in the original size of height 30. We've got a relay here. This 30 is going to go here. Oh, actually, it's 15. Ha. Huh. So we'll go here to relay of 15, and this will override that. Because now this is tied to it. Here's the thing. These extensions, these are going to go past it, which is fine because we then need to subtract it. So there are a few steps that we need to take care of here. And it would be the same thing doing it 3D modeling. So technically, you would always kind of have to do something like this. Um, with these extrusions, now we need to subtract where the door is. So we need to go back to our original region where we created the surface. And this was moved here. And this needs to be extruded also. So what I'll do is I'll take these which allows me to extrude things relative to the center. And I'll use this as the input. And the depth is going to be larger than the depth of the segment. So if the segment extrusion is going to be determined by this amplitude, which we didn't have a 
slider for. The 1.5, well, this has to be at least one, whatever this slider is. times two because we're extruding from the center so this will make sure that we have things accurate now we'll subtract the connections so we'll go to difference solid difference and we'll subtract B rep, this is actually going to be B because we want to subtract this solid and we want to keep both of our. Whoops, I messed that up. We want to keep both of our connections, but we want to remove the other ones. We want to remove the box. Sorry about that. I'm trying to work while I talk it. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Okay. Cool, look at that. We've got the connection and that taken care of in the sense that this could be how you connect it. Um, if you don't want to connect it this way, which means that there's an entire channel that connects it to the wall, we can do smaller segments by doing Boolean intersection. So what we would do is we would create a vertical array. So let's let's do that. This is option one. Now we're going to go into next option, which is really cool too. So we'll go back to our contours and we're going to do another set of contours, but this time it's going to be different, um, which means that it's not going to determine our horizontal array, but we'll take all of this, copy it down here. And now we're going to not be doing the array in the X direction. We're actually doing it in the Z direction. Depending on how, like how many or how spaced out we want them to be, this will determine it being centered. Um, actually, the center, I want it to be exactly in the center. So actually, we'll use the original plane. Now we can take these well, vertical arrays and we can extrude them out. In which direction? Well, it's going to be in this amplitude Z direction. So I can copy that and use that. So notice that I tend to copy things that I've already created. Um, sometimes it can get confusing if you're new, but this is a really cool way to save a little bit of time and know that uh, when you're aware of kind of what you've done, that you can use it again. Okay, so with this, that we now that we've extruded it out, well, it needs to extrude out at least the same amount as that, but we can go even past further. So we can say, if that is how far the box came out, well, let's do it the same amount. So this is going to go into this amplitude and then this will go into this one. Okay. So as you see, we actually have extruded this out past everything, which is good. Uh, and now we're going to extrude this up and down to determine how big our connection is going to be, okay? Um, I'm pretty sure that some of these that are at the edge are going to be smaller, uh, and I think that should be okay. So let's take this and now go back to our reference. This is the one that I you can find on my site. I'll just take this and copy it again, and then bring it back to mine and paste it here and plug in that surface. And this is going to be relative to the center. So that's great because we can now extrude this to whatever amount we want. And that's going to be how big the connection is going to be because our last step is going to be intersection, solid intersection. So where this block meets 
the connection. And we need to flatten the input on this one and graft on this one. Let's see if our... Oh, no, it's going to be flattened, this one. So you flatten the top one, which means that they all come in as one list, and then you graft the bottom as because you have to do intersect it with each. So here as the output, we have 140. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12. But then there's two of each. So now we can take this, disable the preview on all of the stuff that looks like it, we're messing up our work, but technically we're not. And this is how you can connect those verticals. There are, so there are, <laughs> as you can see, there are a few steps. First, creating the bracket. Well, once you have the array, first you create the bracket on one side. Then you mirror it to the other side. Then we extrude it down to create some channels to connect it, which should be enough for it to be, you know, secured to whatever you want. But then we also did a horizontal or a vertical array that intersected with that entire channel. And then we were able to extract these that we have also the ability to increase the spacing if you see here when i increase the spacing we have less of them same going in the other way here we have how wide our connections are going to be so the bigger the connection a little bit more sturdy And the one last thing that is critical to be to do here is going to be the holes for the connection. So this one creates the brackets. Um, now let's go here to an area component and let me show you how we can do that. With this area component, we basically created a point. Um, we need to then create another point that is moved back that way we can create a line segment and that line segment could then be turned into a pipe then we can subtract from it um, so for now we'll leave it here this is going to um, really help those of you that want to create connections a little bit more into fabrication not so much overall designs if you have any questions let me know i would love to answer them for you i have a bunch of resources available here on youtube as well as on my website too so Check that out and um, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much for being here and I hope to see you next time. If you want to get a hold of the script that you saw in this video, check out my website capettydavid.com. When you become a Script Vault member, you'll have access to the script and much more. I also have a workshop if you want to get started learning Grasshopper and a script store with ready-to-go scripts. Otherwise, make sure you hit the like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for future videos, and I hope to see you next time.